Swole Benji here. So today we're going to talk about the fastest possible dungeon clearing build for solo dungeons. This works in tier 4s, tier 5s, tier 8.3s. But I'm going to talk about tier 5 mostly because I believe that to be the most efficient and what you can do to maximize your gains. So first off, uh, in the new patch, there is a buff here. If you look in the top left, it says faction flagging bonus level 3, 15% more fame, silver, and loot. So to activate that, you need to be three tiles away from town. Now, you will be doing this while faction flagged because now, when you are downed in a yellow zone, you will not drop your items on death. So what you're going to do is go three tiles away from town. So I'm with Bridge Watch, so I went to Lazy Grass, which is one, then down and to the right to Snapshot, which is two, and then to Long Shadow Plain, which is three. Three tiles away gives me 15%, and that is the most you can get. Also, this zone has a chest. Now, the thing about this chest is it costs 250000 to purchase a bank tab. And the great thing about this is that you don't have to ride back to town to deposit your goods when your inventory fills up. And if you know, uh, if you've been running solo dungeons, you know that your inventory fills up very quickly, f just full of loot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find a yellow zone dungeon, and I'm going to explain why and how this build is the fastest. Now, corrupted dungeons, there are different builds that are faster for corrupted dungeons. And the thing with the corrupted dungeons, at least with stalker difficulty, it limits your IP. Meaning, if I brought 8.3 into a stalker dungeon compared to someone using 4.2 and no spec, I will only do 50 additional damage over them. But in a yellow zone regular dungeon, I will be doing several hundred more damage over someone that is brand new. Now you're saying, well, why is this for new players? New players can't afford 8.3, and that's where you're wrong. New players can absolutely afford 8.3 gear. Your very first day, you will use your 3 days premium and you will start doing tier 5 dungeons. I've made videos on this. And your main purchase will be upgrading your bolt casters. You can get this 100 mastery, not spec, but mastery in one day. And in that one day, you will be able to afford 8.3 bolt casters, which are only about 2 to 3 million. They're not that expensive. Alright, so here's the build. Use a Spectre Hood. You only need a 4.1. I'm only I'm using tier 6 because it's all it was available. You're going to be using Flash of Insight with the cooldown reduction. Uh, Druid Robe, you only need 4.1 with Obsessive Burst and Aggression. And then you need uh, any leather shoe works, um, but you would want an artifact shoe for the cooldown reduction if you're using 4.1. Uh, all tier 6 shoes have this if they aren't artifact, but only artifact below tier 6 has this. And you're going to be using Refreshing Sprint. It doesn't matter what leather shoe you have as long as it has Refreshing Sprint and the cooldown reduction. For food, you'll use Pork Omelet, but if you're new and you're, you're not good at dodging attacks, you'll use Cabbage Soup instead. And that's all the build is. Now for the bolt casters, you're obviously going to be using Explosive Bolt, Sundershot, Death Ward Climax, and the passive that resets. For capes, you want an 8.3 Thetford cape. These can be really pricey, about 2 to 3 million. Uh, you don't need this, it just, it just helps. So the way it works is you're going to press R, then D, and that's going to stack up your passive damage. And then every time you cast your Q spell, it will stack it up to 6. Now before this buff runs out completely, you're going to press R again, and you'll keep those stacks. And all you're going to do for trash mobs, that are, that is, these mobs right here, you're just going to press your Q ability on them, okay? That's all you're doing. You can use Refreshing Sprint to run across between mobs, or you can use it to rapid fire your Q abilities. Besides that for Cape, the new Carleone Cape might be pretty good for spamming Q. I haven't really fully tested it out to see what's faster, but I'm traditional, I like that for Cape, it's going to be the cheaper option for the longest time, so that's what I'm recommending in this video today. So, you're not going to be using your W skill on the mobs. If you do, it costs a lot of mana, and you will be going out of mana. So, I don't I don't recommend it. Just just use Q. Just just walk forward and uh, press your Q attack on the mobs and you will kill them very quickly. You can uh, you can also click on the mobs, press spacebar to auto attack them to cast your cape when it's off cooldown. And you want to make sure you you kill all the mobs, right? Because if you leave some of them alive, you can't loot the chest. Now, the reason why bolt casters for newbies are the best and fastest clearing dungeon item build in the game, respectively. Well, let me get back to that. Here, here's a boss fight. So the way you're going to fight the boss 
You're going to make sure you have your six stacks. You're going to press W on it, and then you're going to press E. And then it will be dead. Most likely. Yep, see? It died in one spell cast. And this is the test realm, so there's no real good loot. And sometimes you won't get good loot, and you'll probably see in the comments people bitching about the loot. But that's okay. The more chests you open, the more chance you get for good loot. Now, why is Vault Casters, or Crossbows in particular, the best weapons? Well, the Q attack here has a very short... Oh, I forgot to eat, eat my food. <laughs> it has a very short cooldown. By default, it's 2 seconds. Right now, it's at 1.6 seconds. For refreshing sprints, it's even faster, okay? And it has a passive to completely reset its own cooldown so that you can fire off two at once. Like this. See? It also uh, scales with your, your druid robe, allowing you to stack stacks very easily. Now, as far as Qs go, out of all the weapons in the game, this does the second highest damage than any other Q attack in the game. And I'm not doing this on max spec. As you can see, the learning point thing just showed up for bolt casters. I, I put all of these down to one. This is with no spec. Which, by the time you can wear 8.3, you're going to have some spec in bolt casters. But this can get way stronger than what's being shown. Like, way stronger. I'm not going to put spec into it, because this, this is for newbies. The next video will be a more advanced guide on how you can speed up your dungeons by about 15 seconds or so. Oh, and we just got the red buff, so... Uh, now it's like we have max spec. Speaking of... Right? And I'm, I'm playing pretty sloppily here. Like, you can go way more efficiently and way more faster. Like, this guy's is dead. I'm not even pushing anything. I just pushed E one time, and boop! Dead. Then you just take the loot. Again, it's the test realm, so there won't be loot. Okay, so, like I was saying, out of all the Q spells in the game, this does the second highest damage. Now, what does the highest damage, you may ask? Well, that would be the Arcane Staff. The Arcane Staff has a Q ability that, that it's a big explosive circle, just like what we have. Right? It's a big exploding circle. It does about 700 damage instead of 500 at max spec and max gear. We're doing 550 with this. But it has, like, an over a 4 second cooldown, and it doesn't have a passive to reset the cooldown. Uh, now, you can mimic it uh, with the W ability. You can cast Mimic, so you can cast two of them, which is... About how many you would need, two, two, two Qs and a, an auto attack would kill these mobs. But for boss fights, none of the arcane staffs have a high damage E attack ability. And because the Q and the W have higher cooldowns and no armor shred, you technically do less damage to bosses. So, because I just armor shredded the boss and I pushed E, which is going to do how much damage here? He had 5,900, now he has 2,300 health. Like, we did, what, four, three to 4,000 in one button, and I wasn't even fully buffed. So, that's the build, and, he, and what you do is, this gives you faction points, well, because you're faction five, you get a bonus to your fame and loot in the dungeons. You, uh, you want to be carrying around... Uh, journals to fill and you just do this as a newbie to fame farm up and just to show like let's see i have everything at one spec right now just to show you how fast and how much damage it deals obviously this is at 100 so i can use the tier 8 which doesn't take that long according to this to level it to 100 would take about uh 14 million fame which when you're doing about uh, when you're using your learning points at the start and you're and you're doing about a million fame an hour doing this method It's for me. It's one day, but I play all day. I play 12 to 19 hours a day for you It might be a couple days uh, But again with learning points, it's really fast So I'm soul Benji. Thanks for watching I know I've made this video like three times now, but I wanted to cover the new faction changes Because now you can faction flag and you won't lose your gear. You can come here and you can dump all your looties, right? And, uh, and that's how you do it. So the next video I'll talk about when you have high spec and you have 70 million silver to blow, what gear you should use to speed up that process by about 15 seconds per dungeon. It's a lot easier and a lot more brain dead. So, and as always, be a bro, stay swole, make sure you return your shopping carts, and I'll see you in the next one.